Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Bala Subramanian, and I work as a senior software development manager in MySQL release engineering team. And the presentation for today is we're going to see uh, the Docker Compose setup for MySQL in a repeat cluster. Safe harbor statement. And the agenda for today is we're going to see what MySQL NoDB cluster is. We're going to see the architecture, the different components that are involved in MySQL NoDB cluster, the vision that we got from MySQL NoDB cluster. So in depth, we're going to see about uh, the MySQL shell. You know, uh, uh, you know, before I kind of proceed with this, I'll just ask a question. How many of you are using MySQL or use MySQL? Perfect, good number. Right. And is there a developer here or anyone developing or any developers? Any students? Perfect. Any DBAs? Awesome. So I'm sure that I'm going to bet that this MySQL shell tool is going to be a kind of you know, an interesting topic because it's a one unified tool that both developers and the DBAs can work on. So we're going to see what it does and there's going to be a demo as well. So we're going to quickly set up uh, the MySQL NoDB cluster. We're going to see how easy it is to deploy or get the MySQL NoDB cluster set up. Right, so let's get into the NoDB cluster part. 100%. So virtually our organization requires the most critical system to be highly available. Having said that, this is required for the productivity and uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a company, like let's say that I don't want my instance to be down because that's going to be a, a cost-effective thing. So it's going to impact my whole system. So what's the vision of MySQL in ODP cluster? Is it's a single product, which basically means you want to get all the high availability and the scaling features baked into it, which means that you want to get an integrated end-to-end -end solution which is pretty easy to use. As I said, like let's say that you know, it just took me uh, two minutes to set up the NoDB cluster. Interesting, isn't it? So I'm sure that you're going to try this out after this presentation. I mean, and all the code that I'm going to use is available in the GitHub. You can use it for reference. <coughs> uh, so coming back to the picture, it's basically you can see that it is the out-of-box solution first. And we have got everything integrated in one place. Pretty easy to use. And it's extremely scaled out. Let's see the uh, NoDB cluster architecture. So for instance, the first or the backbone of uh, the NoDB cluster is the group replication part here. And you see that there's a primary instance, which is like the primary uh, master. And you got, which is a read write instance. And there are two secondary, which is read only. So which means I need a minimum of three servers to set up a MySQL NoDB cluster. Going to the second one, which is the MySQL router, it's, it lies in between the application and the server part. And having said that, MySQL router is a lightweight middleware that provides transparent routing between the, the application and servers. And uh, trust me, getting the route, route wrap is the pretty easiest thing to uh, you know, do one. You just, you just need to say that hyphen hyphen bootstrap, and the router is going to kind of bootstrap. With, it, it has the capability to understand the number of instances that uh, is present in the system, and it's going to you know, get it configured. So you're going to see that in the demo. The next interesting is the master shell. So what it does is it's in cluster admin. I said that you can use JavaScript. Assuming that I am a Python programmer, yes, you can use Python as well. And of course, SQL is, uh, is by default. The important thing to be noted is for DBA, um, it's like I can use the admin API that's present. I can create instance you know, just with a single command. I can kill an instance. And all I can do in one terminal, which basically is like I need to log into multiple instances to see what is happening. Everything is in one place. All right, this is uh, putting all things together. So as I said, the group replication is, is the first thing that's required. Second is the router configuration and master shell to set up, manage, and orchestrate. And as I said, it's one product, and it has got a full stack HA solution. 
and it's pretty easy to use. Right, let's see what MySQL Shell is. It is basically an advanced command line client and a code editor for MySQL Server. And the best part about that is it has got multiple language support, so which is JavaScript, Python, and SQL. And it supports both document and relational models. And what it does is it performs data queries and also you know, it, we can perform all the administration operations as well. The first thing is like on the scriptable DevOps API, so we can even uh, use the all APIs that are available. And then, as I said, it's a single interface for both the MySQL developers and the DBAs. And it's pretty easy to use. So before we go to the demo, the requirement for setting up an InnoDB cluster is we need a minimum of eight containers. And we need a MySQL shell container to ensure that we get the MySQL InnoDB set up. So that is, uh, you know, which, so MySQL shell container here is a temporary container, which we are going to use to just set up the InnoDB cluster for us. And MySQL router container is one which kind of, you know, it directs us uh, you know, to the corresponding server instances that are available. And lastly, we're going to use this very simple application. So in my demo, I have selected WordPress. So what we do is we kind of bring up an, uh, uh, you know, a quick uh, blog, and then we kind of try to bring down one instance, and let's see how, you know, uh, we could able to get a page out of the box. Right, so let's go back to the demo. I've got it recorded because uh, you know Docker is in it's, it's 25 minutes. It's, trust me, it's, it's not that easy when you try to do a demo of uh, Docker. So let's start. So what the, as I said, you know, let's go to the directory structure first. So I've just got a directory called demo, and what it called is uh, it has got the list of files that are required. So what we do now is let's see the content of each and every file. Right. So let's start the server. So let's say the MySQL server.env and it will have the password that's required to connect to the server and as for the MySQL root host. So the point of the order here is percentage, which basically means that I want all the containers or with the different IP address to connect to my cluster. In a production environment, we need to ensure that we take care of the setting because we don't want anyone to you know, uh, contact our containers. And this demo is basically uh, a sandbox testing. And having said that, I know you can try it out, but in a production, you need to ensure that you take care of all the security and other things. Right, so let's see what the contents of uh, MySQL shell.env is. You see that the shell, we have just got it configured for the MySQL server 1. So we have got three instances server 1, server 2, and server 3. And the best part is we as I said, it's a temporary container, and we've got a script to kind of get the InnoDB cluster set up, and uh, a simple db.sql script to create the database and uh, you know, few, few other activities for our WordPress application. So that's uh, about master shell, and this is the contents of uh, db.sql. We're just trying to connect uh, and create a database for CSHA-DB, of course. And uh, we just kind of create a user and see how it, how it goes. And the next thing is a very important thing, where and you know, what we do is we kind of uh, see how an InnoDB cluster is set up. Right. So what we do here is um, the pretty important thing. It's like shell of connect, it's, which basically means that we're connecting to server one here, and the cluster name is web cluster that we have you know, created. So let's see, you know, what, what, uh, you know, how easy it is to get things done. So if you can see here, we are adding an instance just by command, which is cluster dot add instance, and we will add the next instance, which is master server two. And as simple as that, I'll repeat the same command for server three. So we're going to get our cluster up and running. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Right. And this, after this, what we do is let's see the content of router. So let's say the content of the router dot NV. Right. So the important thing to be noted here is that in order to be num numbers, this is basically we tell uh, you know to our uh, application that 
You just need to wait for the pre MySQL server to be up for me to set up her, uh, you know, uh, for the router. So this is a very important configuration that we need to ensure you know, when we try to set up an uh, MySQL LAB cluster. And yeah, so that is about the MySQL in ODB numbers. So how do we get into thing is so the Docker compose.ml is an important file which got the contents of or you know, it has got all the information about our image. So let's see. Uh, so if you see that, you know, it's, we're just trying to bring up three services, and over here it is like I'm using server 8013, and uh, there are a few things that we need to pass to set up and group replication. So let's see what are those. And server two configuration and server three is similar. And you can see that. So this is the requirement for setting up a group replication, which means that first is I need a log when that has to be enabled and, and only row format is supported and of course the GTID has to be enabled and there should be a primary key as well and uh, third is on the replication metadata it has to be stored on the system tables so I'll use the uh, options that are available master info repository and the relate log repository and fourth is uh, log slave updates yes it has to be enabled for the group replication to work. And last is the right set transaction extraction must be enabled. And so once you're done with, uh, you know, these are the things that are passed in that we pass to this particular uh, server to get the group replication up. And the next important thing that we see is how a shell is configured. So you could say that it's pretty easy and I've got my image. So you can always uh, download the image and see what it what it has. In fact, so what it has is we just need to wait for all the three server one, two, and three to be up for uh, the you know uh, cluster to be set up. So having said that, the router depends on the server and shell. And lastly, if you could say that there is an application WordPress which depends on the master router. So this is what the contents of uh, the Docker Compose.ml file is for. So let's say there's there's no container that we're up and running. We just saw that with Docker PS, which is the command to check the library live instances. And the bringing up an NRB cluster is pretty easy. So what I do is I just use one command since I've got all the configuration set. I when I say it's Docker Compose up, it's going to do all the things for me. That's so what it does is it's going to download all the images that's required, and it's kind of downloading shell now. And this is the command, as I said, Docker Compose Hub. With one single command, you get a complete NodeB cluster set up in a couple of minutes. So let's see. So what it does is it just goes through it, and the important thing to be noted here is first it tries to set up the server depending on the dependency that we have set in the AML file. So let's see what it does now. It just could see the number numbering here. It's trying to uh, do things parallelly. So do and so three. So let's see what happens now. And it just takes why because server is uh, uh, needed out of the image and then we need to set the server. And in the meantime, you see this router will be waiting for the server. So that's a, that's a key point here. By my master uh, shell container, and we are using the server one image. And it just basically goes through uh, a set of things, and then it configured server, and then comes the router. So it just goes through it, and then let's see what the router does now. So these are a lot of things that happen basically, you know, just to get some things up and running. Right. And what has happened uh, now is the router is done and the configuration is done. So we've got all our free service, one, two, and three. So what we quickly do is we just open and and with this, 
the master in a DB set that is complete. Yes. So that's pretty simple. And let's see the content of images now with Docker PS. And you see that everything is well with this healthy, which basically means all your server is server one, two, and three is like perfectly fine. We need not even uh, you know bother about that. So this is an application that is uh, you know that uh, you know a door. We can see that I can directly connect the application to local host because that's how we configure it. And then you could see that you know, I'm just using the database that we used in the db.sql script. The important thing to be noted here is the database host. So what we do is here we pass the MySQL router because router takes care of uh, routing things to the corresponding server. So that is what is uh, the thing to be noted. And REST is pretty normal WordPress setup. So uh, it's going to work very quickly. I'll just you know, uh, get things up very quickly so that. But this is very simple uh, you know, a blog that you wrote. And now let's see. For instance, let's say I want to know what is happening with MySQL router. You can use the command MySQL, uh, like Docker Compose logs MySQL router to see what is happening with each and every container that you've got. So if you see that, I could be able to say this, and this is how I connect to a, uh, in a server. Let's see how it does. So I just need to provide the password. This is the interface that we talked, the MySQL shell, which is one particular page where I can interact with both uh, you know, SQL and JavaScript and Python. So let's see how we do it. By default, it gets into your JavaScript. So you can just see that I, I love this way in which you know, things are put, put up here. The, by default, it gets into JavaScript. So how do you get into another verse? You say black stuff is SQL. Yes, we are in SQL mode. I can run commands in SQL. And getting back to Python is pretty easy. So as I said, three different language and we can perform both interactive and batch operations. And how we set up in cluster is like you know, what I do is uh, or what we do here is you know we just say uh, variable cluster is equal to dba dot get cluster. The best part about MySQL shell is it has got an auto complete feature and it provides you the different option that is available for a DBA to respond. So I need not even remember it. I just say dba dot and tap you will get a list of options that can be used in your uh, in a shell. And db.get cluster is, is the one that gets the name of it. If you remember, uh, now we have got it as, and how do you get the name again? Here is cluster.get name. It will get me that name of cluster here. Here in our case, it is dev cluster. So what we do now is we just see the uh, status of the cluster here. So I can always check the status of the cluster. It's as simple as running one command, status.cluster. Thing to be noted here is this is the first server. The cluster is online, and we can tolerate up to one failure. The reason is we have given the instance as total number of instances is three. And you see that the status is online, and it's in read write, which is the first server, and second server on the both servers dot read one. I can always get into the SQL just by this command. And uh, we will see you know, uh, what is the name of the name. So I can always use select the host name. And it's going to return me the container ID. And let's go back to the another instance to see what the container ID is. It should match it with the master server 1. Basically, we want to bring down this container and see how when our application is going to serve an outage. So I will say Docker stop and the, uh, the image name. And even I can also select the port, which is a normal command like select the port, and you will see the port here. So let's stop uh, the server one to see what is happening. Right, so in case if the HA is not set, my whole application is going to fail and my blog is not accessible. 
but I don't want that. So you can see that you know, there is something that's showing up in the log. Yes, that is my log is accessible, which means that it were able to handle a failure. So it's automatic failure has happened. I didn't, we didn't do anything much except for setting up the NodeDB cluster. And now let's see what has happened behind the scene to get this up and running. And uh, I'm just connecting to instance two just to see uh, you know, what is happening. And this is how we connect to the router. So let's do the same thing again. Let's try to get the cluster name first and, um, and then try to get the status just to see what has happened with our cluster now. And interestingly, you will see something very catchy. What, hap what happens is, uh, you know, it has got an intelligence just to make the server two is read, write over here. This is what has happened. And server one, it's missing, which basically means there's something happened to the server one. And you could see that it's online. The other one is like, it's, this other one is online, but it can tolerate up to one failure because now server one is down. Yeah, so that is pretty uh, thing to be noted and the different status. So what we quickly do is we kind of you know go to the another session and we'll try to bring up to kind of the server instance our server container again and see what is going to happen. So let's start with Docker start and the container name. And let's check the status and you could see that it's going to take a while. Right, and let's write again. Yes, server one is back online, which basically means that uh, as application is up and running, one thing is it has got an automatic you know, a failover to ensure that whenever I add an instance Mac, it's going to add it as read only. But as a user, I won't be able to know what is happening with regards to uh, the cluster. So let me just quickly go over to the presentation. So in case if you have got any queries, as I said, we are available at the booth. And this is a very good resource. Uh, and I can always go through the links. And in, in, in case if you're interested or to know where to download MySQL, let me just show it very quickly. This is a page where you can download the MySQL server. The latest version that we have got is 8013. So the URL is dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash MySQL. And this is basically uh, the Docker image that we've got, which is uh, MySQL server, which is, which is our own official MySQL server Docker image. And on the Docker Hub, the scripts that we spoke or the images is available for free. You can always download, start, and you can always uh, you know, do the same thing with setting up an NDP cluster in two minutes. So all of these are available, and even the, you can always pull the source code. So these are the two things that are available. So feel free to use it. Right, so with that, pretty much done. Any questions? What is the CPU? Sorry? What is the CPU? Is Everything is free, so that is what I said. If you can download it for free, start using it, including shell, router, server, everything is open source. So the URL that we, we use here is, I go here and I select the thing that I want. For example, let's say I'm, I'm a Red Hat user and I can always use Red Hat. It, it is available on different formats. Select whatever you want, use it for free. So that's my scale, it's an open source. And in case if you want to download the Docker image, yes, this is what, you go here and then buy it. If you say Docker pull, MySQL slash MySQL server, you can get Offer image for mask with. More questions? Yes? So this is the high availability solution, right? Yeah. Apart from that, it's very really low balance. Yes. So, uh, very good question. So, router has got two ports. So, 6446 is for read write. And I can always configure my instance with 6447, which is a read only instance. And I, I can always get my application point to that port. Any more questions? Okay, no. Thanks for attending.